Ooh. Gets rid of the moss. That's what I need to get rid of. A bit of moss. Thought I'd give it a go. I usually use um, professional fertilizer. But let's try this evergreen stuff. Anyway, this, this, uh, this evening, I should say, this evening, I went on a little trip. I went to a nice little place called Hockley. Um, a lot of money around there. A lot of money. A lot of big houses, a lot of posh people. Get a lot of Porsche Ferraris and things driving around. People are te seeking attention. Well, there was also <clears throat> a lot of women. A lot of women walking around everywhere, you know, showing off their curves and all that. Those of you that liked my video on the curves, you'd like walking around now. Oh yes, loads of it everywhere. That's where my respect goes. But I've got a little something, a little something in the van. That I went to go and pick up. So we're going to have a look at it. Let's go and have a look at it, shall we? That's that hedge I was talking about before. Anyway, look what I've got. Look at that. Got ourselves a very old, well, I'm going to try and find out how old, is an Echo Strimmer. So I'm going to try and, well, I will get it running. Let's go and uh, have a closer look at it in the garage, shall we? Right, so this is what we've got. Someone's put a little makeshift wooden step on there. So let's. Close that. So this is what we seem to have. We've got ourselves a little echo strimmer. It's got a metal, it's actually got a metal guard there. We've got a metal pole or tube. Some people call them different things. Um, we have got a plastic throttle though. But that's no problem. It may or may not be original. Um, definitely, I'd say probably not the original on and off switch. But it's a metal one. It uh, functions just this looks like a new piece of tube on here now the bloke I actually went and got this from turns out he's a fitter for a company called JKS you know and we hire machines from there sometimes and you get a lot of tipple lorries coming so I was having a good old chat with him about uh, you know things here and there anyway he seems to, I don't know where he gets them from maybe from auctions or something but he said um, he gets a lot of strimmers, and and uh, I did notice there was a lot of them on there, and uh, but they were all sort of normal ones. This one stuck out because of the age of it and the way it looks. I mean, look at that. Look at the history of it. I mean, obviously, why has somebody put that on there? So it had some kind of plastic foot on there at some point, guard or something. It's broken off. So somebody's made themselves a nice little metal one and screwed a bit of wood to the bottom of it, which is fantastic. Um, he did say he hadn't tried to start it. However, there is petrol <coughs> in the, in that tube. You can see a little air bubble there in amongst it. So at some point, they've got a primer bulb. We've got a primer bulb. We've got no primer bulb. We got, um, it's a bit cramped here at the moment. I've got a lawn boy there. Um, a couple of boxes and things. Um, what have we got here then? This is the engine. We've got choke. Um, the high and low speed needles, tick over adjustment and all that. Exhaust there. So, yeah. Let's dig into it a little bit, shall we, and see what we can actually find. So let's get rid of some of this. Dirt from around here, shall we? Choke works. Somebody has tried to get this going because the choke has got oil all over it. They've all that up. Um, there's fuel in there. There's a new bit of petrol line. I don't know if there's any petrol in the tank. Don't look like there is no, there's not, no, nothing in there. But somebody has tried to get it going at some point. That's in the stop position. That's in the run position. Let's get a screwdriver and have a look in the car. Might better get some petrol in there. And it might fire up. 
We'll see whether it does before I actually start taking it apart. That screw was loose, so I reckon someone's been in here. The fact that it says intake on there as well. Actually, how old are these? What's the serial number? Made in Japan. It's an SRM 1400, that's what it is. It's an SRM 1400, made in Japan. So, <clears throat> I'll have to see if I can find, put that serial number in the in the internet or something, and it might tell me. I'm not quite sure. It's full of cobwebs in there, inside that air filter. I'm not really sure if there's supposed to be a foam in there. Or well, how that really works. But there might be. I'll prize that off of there without damaging it. There we go. Alright. So that's all we've got for an air filter. Just a little bit of mesh on both sides there. So, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to blow this out. Well, not blow it out. We'll Clean it out with a little bit of carb spray. Hello. All right. So I've got some a bit of pepper in. This is what I run in that uh, in that lawnmower, that lawn boy lawnmower. But we'll stick a bit of this in here. Whether it's going to run, we don't know. It may do. It may not run very well. It may run all right. If it does run, it'll be a bit smoky. But it'll be very smoky. Anyone there? No. Hello? I'd lost both the screws for that air filter for a moment. Put those there and a couple of little interruptions. We've got a tank full of pet roll. Um, I did notice it doesn't feel like there's tremendous compression there. Um, but it might be enough, might be able to get it going. So we've got it. This is apparently on the on position, this little switch. Um, see what happens. So I haven't checked for spark yet, we're just seeing if it's going to initially fire. Hmm, interesting. Doesn't feel that to me as if there's hardly any compression. Oh, a little fire. <laughs> what is firing? So we have got some ink. So it is going to run. We do know it's going to run now then. How well will it run? That's the question. Still got little bubbles in that fuel line. I reckon we might have a little blockage in the carb. A little diaphragm in there could be blocked. So we might have to take it apart and have a look to see about that. inside this I've got some diaphragms somewhere um, for a, a carb but whether they're whether they'll fit in this one I don't know I can't find a screwdriver that'll actually fit these little screws now I, I reckon there's a blockage on the inlet tube is what I reckon because that it wasn't letting the fuel through and when I took the pipe off um, 
there was a little tsk noise, which means it's pretty blocked. So that one's held on by one big screw. Get that off. I reckon someone's been in here fairly recently, or I might not have been in the carb, but they've been trying to get it going. The bloke I got it from was adamant he didn't try and get it going. And there's quite a lot of old pepper in there. Diaphragm doesn't seem too bad. Well, that seems alright. That's pretty old petrol in there, though. See how it's all... It's all gloopy. Smells quite bad. Get the carb spray. Might need a bit of air as well. Get all that out there. Get the carb spray in there. Once we get it all sprayed up, cleaned, so you don't really want to get too much carb spray on these little diaphragms and things. There's another diaphragm underneath in that one. You don't want to get too much carb spray in amongst them, but uh, you know you got to, you got to use a little bit. You get a little bit of air, put it up in there. Try and do it that way around so you can see it. Don't know whether it picked up on the camera or not, but there was a load of stuff come shooting out. Just put a lid on that petrol. There was a load of stuff there that come shooting out all these little ways. So, I'll spray a bit of that in there now. There you go. So, whatever's blocked in there has now come out. Now while I'm here, is it worth taking the other diaphragm, the other thing off the bottom and having a look in there or not, I wonder? Shall we? Or shall we not? I'm going to put that back on while it's like it is, before it expands. Getting a little carb spray on there could make that expand. Or whatever. So I reckon someone, some, someone at some point has had a little go to try and get it going. However, this is probably the genuine Walbro carb, actually. WA46. It's WA46, this little carb. Uh, it's probably the genuine one, actually. Uh, well, certainly looks quite the, like the genuine one, anyway. So we've got the high and low speed jets there little tick over screw there that's where the throttle links onto it that's the inlet pipe inlet uh, thing for the petrol there's another another uh, what's it this is kind of a instead of a I don't know whether it's worth taking that off that might be all right shall I have a look at it or not I suppose while we're here we'll take it off shall we and have a look inside there it may be a mistake because you know, if you just sometimes if you disturb things when they're actually all right, you can make things worse. I think the problem was there was a blockage. There was a blockage on the inlet, and that was the issue. I think. But let's get this off here, then. and uh, we'll have a look. All right. Well, that looks like a that looks like a fairly new diaphragm actually. It's not it's not uh, loose or stiff or anything like that. That all looks fairly clean in there as well. It's all moving. Oh, I've got a magnetic screwdriver all in place. Everything in there is working as it should do. Can't see any issues there. That's all working. So let's put all that back on there like that. 
If it still doesn't run, I'll have to delve a little bit deeper, but as it looks all right, I'm thinking to myself, well, this might run. What I like to do, right, is if I can get something running, and I can get it running well, then I'll spend a little bit of time cleaning it all up. So if I can get this running really well, I might then replace the diaphragms and any gaskets and things anyway, because I don't intend on moving this strimmer on. Um, you know, if I'm going to move it on, I'll buy it as cheap as possible, and I'll get it going, and then I'll, you know, replace parts as and when needed, but I won't spend any more money or time on it than is absolutely necessary. But I've got this one for fun. What I really want was a Lawn Boy strimmer, which is uh, now Ryobi, but a Lawn Boy one, around the same age as the uh, mower that I've got. But I come across this Echo, so I want a strimmer and a mower. So I've got myself a strimmer and a mower, so I'm not going to move this one on. So I'm having it as a little project for myself. Which is why I don't mind uh, spending a little bit of extra time and money on it, you know. So that's that. Let's go and put it back on then, shall we, and see what it's like. <laughs> back down on the floor again now. Right. Well, I've got all of this off. We know we got spark. Because it ran. This one's alright in there. Well, we know we got spark because it ran. So I know those electrics are probably going to be alright. If it ran on a carb spray, we're all good. So let's get this back on then. That's our little throttle. It's not a very big opening on that little throttle. Look at the size of that little opening. Tiny little carb, tiny little opening. Look at that. Giving you all the little lecture on how to do the how to do the screws up, and I forgot to put the got to put the air filter block box thing on. How's about that? Let's connect this little throttle. I'll just go in there like that. Lovely. Right, let's see if it's going to run, shall we? <laughs> that looked promising, didn't it? We got it running, didn't we, pretty well. All it needs is a little bit of adjustment on the carb there, I think. So, uh, zoom in there a little bit. And we'll see what we can do. So all I'm going to be doing is got high, low, high and low needles. That one's a low one. All right, so the low one's on the right-hand side, that one there. And the high one's on the, on the left. <laughs> Sounded like it needed a bit more fuel. Pressure might be a little bit low, maybe. It does certainly. Does. Let's see if I can get a piston, piston for it, and uh, give it a bit of a rebuild. Because it's definitely, it's got to be that. It should be. There's nearly no compression there at all. 
that's just that's just easy. Look. It's almost as if there's no plug in it. It is tight though, isn't it? That plug. I suppose I should probably check to see if it's tight first. I haven't, I haven't even had that plug out. I haven't even had it out. I haven't done anything with it. Yeah, it's tight. I wonder what sort of condition it's in. Bloody hot, I tell you. Holy ma holy Yeah That's It's nice and wet That's for sure It's not too bad it's not brown it's not white It's not overly black either But I reckon this is a relatively new plug so I reckon someone's been in here, not been able to get it run right, realised the compression's quite low on it. See? It's almost as if it ain't got a plug in it. Look at look at that now. Right, and then I'll put the plug back in. Put the plug back in. And uh, we'll see how low the compression is. I mean, these small engines, they don't have a lot of compression. But usually they'll be a bit more boop, 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 sort of thing. Um, not really, really easy. Uh, plugs back in. <laughs> There's no compression there at all, really. It's exactly the same as not having any plug in it whatsoever. come back to that I reckon see if I can find a piston kit for it and we'll go from there I reckon right then let's take to get back stuck into this shall we let's take off this and uh, have a look at the clutch what I want to do is I want to separate the engine the engine itself from the rest so I can put the engine up on the bench and just work on the engine and uh, I want to see if I can get this little ring unstuck. Because it would be pretty cool if I could get the ring unstuck and we could get it going properly. And then when I do get the new ring, I'll just put the new ring in. That's why I like two strokes so much, because they're so easy to work on. To, you know, it's easy to work with. If that was a four stroke, you'd have to fan around with time in each time. And can't stand four strokes, I really can't. Horrible. Horrible, horrible. This is our on and off switch. I might treat that with a little bit of a uh, contact cleaner. That one, maybe another time. All right, we've got one more screw around here. Terribly simple on a lot of older machines. You know, older things, older lawnmowers, trimmers, things. Much more simple than all these new ones these days. So, how does this come off of here then? Is that all of them? I don't think there's any more. I've got one little, little bolt there, I wonder if that's part of it. Oh. 
using the wrong end. What do you think? Take this all the way out, shall we? Might as well take that one all the way out. Okay, so we can... Okay, so then we can take that shaft out of there, brilliant. Well, what I wanted to do is I wanted to leave the shaft on the end of that, but uh, never mind. I can always move it like that instead. Aha, uh -huh, right. Oop. The rug was on there. Let's give us a little bit of a clean. See what we can find. So somehow, I thought this was going to be quite easy, but maybe it's not. I thought separating this would be uh, quite simple. Oh, there we go. Started to come away. It's just this side that's a little bit. Is there another screw in there? Do you reckon there's another screw in that little hole there? Have a look. There is. Oh, it's not it's a screw. I think it's. I think they're just locating pins. It's just a locating dowel. There we go. Load of dirt and uh, debris in there. Little clutch system. See what I was hoping to achieve by going in here was just to be able to see what it's like on the inside of here. My, that, clutch, that little clutch seems like it's all right as well. Because it was making quite a lot of noise and it was quite vibratey when it actually engaged. So maybe, I thought maybe this might need some attention in here, but it's not too bad. See those, we've got quite a bit of rust on these. So it might have a bit of a weak spark. That could be a reason why, a bit of weak spark perhaps. I wonder if I've got a little bit of sandpaper. I don't know if I've got any sandpaper. Have a little bit of wet and dry somewhere. No, I think I have. I thought I might have had a little bit. What I have got is a wire brush. So we can get rid of that rust. Rid of most of that rust on that one. Uh, we've got yeah, a little bit of rust left on that one as well. So we could have a weak spark. We, we know it runs, but it runs very lazy. So we could have a weak spark, that could be why. if we take that little cover off there. What do you reckon? What do you reckon? Take this little cover off. Screw's all nice and tight on here, that's a good thing.
Another one here. Right, so I've had to take all the coil and everything off, which I didn't really want to do, but that gives me access to the two, the only two, screws, not bolts, screws, that hold on this whole cylinder. There's one. There's another. So now we can undo these. This is literally like, this must be like a literal 20 cc's. It's a tiny little engine, isn't it? Tiny little engine there, so it is. Well, I'm hoping the ring is just stuck compressed and we can uncompress it. And uh, we'll be well away then. If we get it unstuck. Right, I couldn't find a rubber mallet, but I managed to get it off in the end with my hands. Um, I think that gasket's had it. I may have to make a new gasket. Good job I've got some gasket paper, wouldn't it, eh? Right, here we go. Here comes our little piston. Doesn't look too bad in there, really, does it? Not really too many scores or anything going on in there. It's a little piston like. Doesn't look too bad. It's like a little nitro engine. Tiny little engine. There's not even loads of play in the uh, in the crank, we've, even, we've got roller, we've got little roller, rolling bearings there. Give that a little bit of a clean up. All right, let's bring you in for a closer look. Right, here we go. We've got our little piston there. Look, we've got little needle bearings in there. Little needle bearings. There's not even a, hardly any play in that, or in the top one. But what I'm interested in is the ring. It, it's not stuck, I was thinking it might be stuck. But I wonder if it's uh, lost its spring sort of thing. I don't know, it feels kind of springy. I don't think it's as springy as it should be. But it's not stuck, I was thinking it might be stuck in like that. You know, it should be uh, sprung a little bit, but I was thinking it might be stuck in. But that seems alright, so I'll just give the top of it a little bit of a clean. It's not bad, is it, eh? Not bad at all. I'll give the top of it a little bit of a clean, then I'll have to go and make a new gasket. Once I've made a new gasket, I'll put it all back together. And uh, I'll try and get it running one more time. But if not, I'll just put a new ring in it when I get a new ring.
We've got a little bit more compression now.
Oh, Sunday morning, back at it again. Um, I'm going to try and do a little bit more on this little strimmer this morning. Try and get this done. Um, probably just going to have it all in one video. Trying to get a bit of attention from her yesterday and a bit of attention from her this morning, but she ain't interested in me indoors, so I'll come out here and do a bit of this, shall I? I do know I've got some bits and bobs somewhere um, in one of these drawers. It's probably going to be in this drawer. Bloody hell. Tell you what, you can't do anything around here without things falling off. Um, I'll look straight away, there's some. And then I've got a little bag of diaphragms. Um, I love a little bag of diaphragms. This one's already been opened, it's going to be the same thing, yep. Don't know if I've got any more. I don't know what's in this little box. Might be, because I thought I had some diaphragms for different carbs. Looks like there's a, quite a few in there, different bags. Might be some more in here. Oh, got a whole carb. This looks like it's relatively the same as the one that's on it. Oh, the one that's on it, I ain't got that. Uh, oh, that's a choke. Oh, I see. Different type of carb in it. I wonder if that would still work. I don't think that'd work, it's got a choke there. What's this? Is that the throttle? That's the throttle. Mm. I don't think that would work on it because the one that's on it doesn't have a choke like this. The choke is on the air filter, not on the carb. So I don't think that would work on it. That's a shame because that's, that's pretty much identical apart from that. Oh well, never mind. So what we'll do then? Did you know I had that? See, so that's why you should always buy bits and bobbles when you see them when they come up. Just buy them. So I've got three little bags of diaphragms and things. So I'm just going to take it apart and see if I can find one that fits. So I had a look through all the little bags, and then this one that hadn't been opened is pretty much what I need. This is, I think, this is going to be the culprit. Usually it is. Usually they go a bit hard, but brittle and stop letting any fuel through and stop working as they should do. This feels like a particularly cheap one but it's going to be better than the one that was in it. So off with the carb and we'll get back in it. Oh! <laughs> a bit too much. God, just had a mouth full of petrol. Not really what you want. So Let's take this old diaphragm out and we'll compare it to this new one. Oh, hello. We'll compare it to this new one, shall we? You know, I'm probably shouting at the screen then. It's not, it's not in the shop. It's not in the shop. It's not in frame. It's a Sunday morning and I've just spent three hours driving around looking for fly tipping and I haven't been able to find any. It's a good thing in a way because it means, you know, the environment's going to be cleaner, but it's a bad thing for me because you find good stuff in there sometimes. Also, it's good, it's nice on a Sunday morning, you know, five o'clock, go out, have a drive around, you know. And you're not getting any attention from her indoors, you know, going out in the morning, having a drive around, isn't, it's nice, therapeutic. Right. After 24 years, I've got that little needling seat and the little spring back in there. That's working all right now. Needle's going up and down, as it should do. That's all working. So I've just got to put this gasket and diaphragm. Right go on. And we're all good to go. Brand newly refurbished carburetor. Let's see if it works. <laughs> uh, we've still got no luck with it. I took the cap off because I was trying to force a bit of petrol through 
trying to get it to work, it will run and then it will just run out. I still think the compression is far too low for it. So. There's nearly nothing there. I know it's only a small engine, but it should be a bit more than that, I think. So, just going to have to wait for that new ring and piston, and we'll see uh, if any luck then.